Hello, everybody. Yes, thank you, Fabio, for the introduction. It's really great to see so many of you from around the world here today. Uh, I hope you're having a great Global Schools Festival so far. I've seen some great speakers so far, and hopefully today I can do them a little bit of justice with my presentation as well. So, yes, as Fabio said, I'm going to be talking about using mobile phones for exam preparation. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, what Fabio said already, I'm a teacher, teacher trainer based in Seville in the south of Spain. And today, what I'm going to be focusing on, as I'm a massive fan of using social media and new technologies in the classroom, I'm going to be focusing on what I think is the most useful of them all. That's the mobile phone and its infinite uses that we can have in class. Um, as Fabio said, linked to, my, linked to my passion for using social media and new technologies in class, I'm also one of one, uh, one, of one for, uh, four presenters for the Learn English with Cambridge YouTube channel. Um, of course, I'm very biased, but there's some really great content on there for both students and teachers alike. So if you haven't checked it out or if you haven't told your pupils about it, please tell them about it as soon as possible. I'd love to see you there. Um, but let's get on with today's session. And what's going to happen in today's session? I'm going to give you a quick overview now. So I'm going to show you five of my favourite exam preparation activities using a mobile phone. Now, today's session is practical. OK, I love sessions like this personally, where I'm going to give you ideas that you can take away and use in your classes straight away. So I'm going to focus on the five uh, preparation activities, one for each skill and then one for pronunciation as well. And in doing that, I'm going to touch on some wider themes in the EFL world as well. Towards the end, I'm going to talk about policing the use of mobile phones in class, because I understand, especially if you've never used a mobile phone in class today, you may be a bit wary of it. So I'm going to show you how to establish some rules and limits when using them in class. And then at the end, as Fabio said, we're going to have a little bit of time for questions. Um, so today's session is interactive. What I'm going to be doing is setting you guys some tasks and I need you to complete those tasks and to interact with me. What's important to do that is to make sure you guys know where the chat box is, because through the chat box, you're going to communicate with me. I have the chat box here and I've already seen a lot of you introducing yourself, so that's great. Um, but if you haven't found the chat box yet, just take a few seconds to find it because you're going to need it for today's tasks. And the first task straight away, OK, is I have we're not dealing with words straight away, but instead with numbers, the number one nine five or one hundred and ninety five. What I would like you to do, please, is to think about today's session using mobile phones uh, for exam preparation and think. What is the significance of one nine five one hundred and ninety five in relation to today's session, please? So. Could you please comment in the chat box? What do you think this number means in relation to today's session? <laughs> the money they pay you per lesson, I wish, but thank you. Okay, lots of answers coming. That's really good. Just comment in the chat box. What do you think this number means to today's session? OK, the amount of people participating today. Number of words which are important, number of exam questions. Is it a mobile phone code? It's connected to mobile phones. I'll give you just a few more seconds. OK, now. 195 is. The average amount of minutes that each person spends on their phone a day, which is a lot now. And I would assume that pupils, younger pupils especially, probably spend even more. Now, love it or hate it, mobile phones are a massive part of our students' lives. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is a question for another day. But what I want to emphasise is that quite obviously mobile phones motivate, engage and interest our students. That's something that's clearly obvious. Um, however, is this represented in our classes? Um, that's up for you to answer, but hopefully after today I can give you some ideas so that even more so they can be used in our classes because I do genuinely believe they're a really great tool. 
Um, so thank you for your answers there, guys. Now we're gonna, don't go anywhere. Don't leave that chat box because I have another task for you straight away. So what I'd like you to do is, I'm going to show you a conversation. And in that conversation are some deleted messages. I would like you simply to read the conversation and then write what you think the deleted message could be, what it could be. So we're gonna look at deleted message number one, first of all, please. Here's the conversation. And yes, I would like you please to comment in the chat box. What do you think is deleted message number one, please? Great, we've got lots of answers coming in. Fantastic, really good. Did they arrive? Have they arrived? When did they arrive? Lots of the same meaning, fantastic. Thank you, some really good quick answers. Well done guys, you're really on the ball today. Okay, um, fantastic. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna look and I would like you to comment with what could be deleted message number two, please. Fantastic, are you going out? Brilliant, okay. Uh, we're gonna move on to number three, some really good answers. We're going through this quite quickly, but here we go, there's number three now, please. Still some answers for number two, you're going out on Saturday, fantastic. Not free on Saturday, can we meet? No, not Saturday, how about a rain check? <laughs> And then finally, guys, let's move on to number four, please. What do you think could be, could be deleted message number four, please? Really great participation so far, guys. Really good. Let's keep it up. I hate coffee. I don't like coffee. I'm fasting. I don't like coffee. I can't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. I'm actually allergic to coffee. Wow. Um, OK, guys, fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop you there. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you the answers. What's really important here, though, is that I didn't I don't want you, nor do I expect you to get the exact correct language. But what I would like you to get is more or less the same meaning. So just think about that when I show you the answers. So number one, hi, mate. Did your birthday presents arrive yesterday? Lots of people said, did they arrive yesterday, which is perfect. Well done. Um, number two. Number three. And finally, number four. So remember, if more or less you have the same meaning, that's absolutely fantastic. OK, so we've now done an activity using a mobile phone. This was a WhatsApp conversation because this is my first example preparation activity. Um, of how we can use a mobile phone for exam preparation amongst our students. And specifically, this particular activity is where we use deleted WhatsApp conversations to prepare for gap text activities. Now, gap test activities, you can see on your screen here, you've got a B1 preliminary example and a B2 first example. I don't know about you guys in your context, but notoriously where I teach, pupils find this really, really difficult for two main reasons. One is simply there's lots and lots of information to process. I mean, the options have lots of information to process, not just the text. So there's lots of information to look at. And amongst all this information, the answers are often really small or subtle bits of information. So what I like to develop amongst my pupils is attention to detail and closely looking at what comes before and what comes after the gap as well, which of course my WhatsApp activity is designed to develop amongst our pupils. Um, however, what we did is actually the end of a process and I'm gonna show you the complete process now. So the activity process is that pupils, you give a lesson or, or part of a lesson on recognizing gap reading clues. I've given the example there pronouns, Things like this, these, those, often they're the clue to what the option is. So for example, you do a lesson on this. 
and then pupils in pairs to next people next to each other they create a dialogue on whatsapp and again encourage them to use the exam clues wherever possible then one side of the conversation is deleted as you as i'm sure all of you guys know how to do it's then sent to the other pupils and then what we did together as a class we completed each other's conversations and then we sent the answers as well so that's how i would do this in a lesson and then finally at the end i would ask them to complete a gap text activity because uh, what we've done in our lesson we've developed an exam skill using a mobile phone we've developed the skill of looking closely before and after a gap we've developed it and then of course at the end it's a good idea for your students to practice it in a real exam context so that's the activity and adaptations now i'm going to show you adaptations for all of my activities for older learners younger learners higher levels and lower levels for lower levels you could give pupils a deleted conversation as a framework and then they then complete it give them a bit of help and what you can also do when they've completed it when they erase it and then when they pass it to the next uh their next their partners next to them they can also give keywords for example message number three has the word birthday you can also do this as well and then finally don't forget that of course we've used whatsapp but you could do this on other mediums facebook messenger is a great one the notes app on your phone it doesn't necessarily have to be on whatsapp but yes there we go that's my first activity using a mobile phone for exam preparation please um now this is not a task please don't comment in the chat box but i would like you to think we're going to think now about a productive skill speaking and i want to think what are the difficulties for you especially with assessing exam speaking activities in class just think for maybe 10 seconds what's difficult for you please okay so what's difficult for you guys now here's some example activities this is what's difficult for me and i'm sure it's difficult for you as well there's one teacher and there's loads of pupils of course you can sit down and only really at one time you can monitor one student speaking maybe two if they're talking in a pair however you've got lots of pupils there that you simply can't pay attention to at the same time that's a problem and of course writing for example the other productive skill at the end of a writing lesson there's a there's a piece of writing you can take it you can relax you can sit at home on your sofa you can correct it speaking just disappears into thin air and these are two reasons that can often affect our ability to help our pupils with their exam preparation so how can the mobile phone help this it's a very simple idea but it's something if you haven't done them already if you haven't done it already rather it's a really really good idea is recording exam speaking activities so i'm going to talk you through the activity and then we're going to talk i'm going to tell you some more afterwards first of all what i would ask is that pupils record a speaking task on their phone in pairs for example they record a task a good tip is to make space of course if you've got lots of conversations very close to each other when you listen to the speaking, it can be quite blurry. So make space. And then students are given one field from the marking criteria, for example, Lexis. And then as a group, watch an example from YouTube and correct it. Talk to your people, say this was good, this was bad, say why, why not? Train them to know how to correct a piece of speaking. Because then, of course, they're going to listen to their recordings and mark it according to the criteria again make space or use headphones so they're not all listening to each other but what you're doing there you've trained your pupils how to assess a little bit of speaking and then finally what i would do as well is get pupils to record a different speaking task the same part of the exam for example pair, uh, b1 preliminary part two but a different task and then they mark this for homework okay so what you're doing there is that rather than speaking disappearing into thin air, you're using a mobile phone to capture it, to analyze it, and then improve your students' performance. And something really nice, a wider theme that this does, it helps develop autonomous learners because 
you're showing your pupils the method of reflection, looking at a piece of something they've done, thinking about how to improve, and then having the opportunity to improve. So it helps develop autonomous learners, which is something that, of course, we all want to do in our classes. In terms of adapting, um, students can be given more than one criteria field. If they're higher levels or older learners, they could look at two, three or four at the same time. Students can assess each other's recordings as well. I, I've done that with younger learners and I often find they're a bit reluctant to say this could be improved or this could be improved. They're, they're very quick to say, oh, your speaking was fantastic. So maybe it's more for older learners and higher levels. But that's a really nice idea. And then for lower levels as well, what you can do is simply uh, they can repeat the same task as what they did in the beginning. Um, so we've looked at reading. Now we've looked at speaking, recording uh, speaking activities to then improve them. Preparing for pronunciation. Now, I love this activity. I really, really like this activity. What we're doing here, how to use mobile phones to improve your pupils exam pronunciation is using voice operating systems to test pronunciation. So um, pronunciation is a really big, uh, it, it is one of the criteria for every level of the Cambridge speaking exam. As you can see here, um, what you can do using a mobile phone, again, I like the really like this activity, is that most mobile phones will have a voice operating system. For example, here you have Siri on, on an iPhone. And then popular apps, for example, WhatsApp and, for example, Google Translate have the function. They all have different purposes, but they have a function that is there to recognize what you say and then to put it on the screen. Um, and what the beauty, the beauty of these programs are is that your student's pronunciation doesn't have to be perfect for it to understand it. It simply has to be intelligible which means more or less good enough. And I'm sure most of my pupils, hand on heart, their pronunciation is good enough to be understood. And that's really great because that's representative of what real life is. You don't have to be, as a non-native speaker, you don't have to have perfect pronunciation in order to be understood. So these programs are really great for testing your pupil's pronunciation and to see how accurate it is. In terms of an activity, how would I use this in class? What I would do is, um, first of all, I'd give a lesson on language chunks. So for example, part of a speaking exam. Um, and then at the pronunciation stage, what I would ask them to do is to simply speak these chunks into the phone using Siri, using WhatsApp, and see if they're recognized. And genuinely, most of the chunks will be recognized because your student's pronunciation is more than good enough. However, if there are some that aren't so good, uh, please make a note of them. And then as a good teacher, of course, what you can do is later on, you can either practice them, provide models um, to help improve them. And then finally, as I said, it's a good idea to then do it as part of the speaking exam. But yes, so using voice operating systems to test pronunciation is really, really nice. It's a really nice activity, really quirky, a bit different. And the beauty of it is, like I said, most of the time your students' uh, pronunciation is recognised. And it's a real confidence boost for them as well. OK, so what we're going to look at now is we've looked at how to use WhatsApp conversations for gap text activities recording yourself while doing speaking activities, which helps develop autonomous learners, looking at how to improve pronunciation with voice operating systems. Now we're going to look at some writing. First of all, though, this is the next task. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some writing tasks on the screen, and I would like you simply to comment with the name of the exam, please. So, it's first fingers on the fingers on the buzzers, please, because as soon as I get the first right answer, I'm moving on. Can you please comment in the chat box what exam has these writing tasks, please? Wow, wow, straight away. There we go. Who was that? Anna, Patricia, fantastic. Okay, of course, B2, uh, C1 Advanced, and the C2, really. The review's a little bit different, but yeah, and the C2 as well. Wow, that was very, very quick. Okay. Ready? Here comes the next one. What exam are these tasks from, please? 
B1. Sorry, I didn't see who said that, but somebody said it. Yes, of course, it should be one as well. Now, how can we use mobile phones to for exam, for writing exam preparation? <clears throat> what, what mobile phones can do is they can provide real world context to writing tasks. Now, obviously, we're talking about exams today, but this is something I'm a really big believer of generally about how mobile phones can make language in the classroom real. First of all, let me talk you through what I would do as an activity, first of all. Oh, sorry, before that, I'm going to show you some examples. So imagine you're doing an email writing lesson in class. Usually the pupils are writing on paper. Why not use a mobile phone and ask your pupils to actually send genuine emails to one another in class? Or next time you're doing a review, a book or film review, tell your pupils you're going to leave it on Amazon and actually put it on Amazon as a genuine review. Or if you're doing short stories as well, why not use apps like Commerful or Wattpad where you can upload your short stories? Why not use a mobile phone to give these, your pupils English a real world context and a real world uh, purpose? Or Letterboxd for movie reviews. Thank you, Fran Francisca. There's plenty of places out there. I've named three, but thank you, Francisca. There's lots, lot more out there. Um, in terms of activity process, how would I use this in class? What I would do is that students write a first draft. I, I would, before I even start, emphasize to your pupils that this is an important piece of writing. We're going to put this uh, out there on the World Wide Web. So ask them for a first draft and emphasize the importance by then checking it correct and correcting it, and then posting the writings. Um, something I like to do in my class, when I post the writings, I like to do it in front of the whole class, on my big screen up there, and I say, Juan, right, we're gonna put your review on Amazon, because it's a really proud moment, and it's like a kind of bit of ceremony, really, where Juan gets to see his writing suddenly go from um, go from a document onto the World Wide Web, and it's a really, really nice thing to do in front of the whole uh, class. Um, a little tip personally, what I think is that aside from the email, the email obviously goes back and forth between students. You as a teacher should post, um, especially if your pupils are under 18. You don't want to be responsible for them interacting with um, whoever it may be on the internet. Take responsibility and you post it yourself. I think that's the safest way. Um, and this is something I'm going to repeat it that I genuinely, genuinely believe mobile phones uh, are great for in class. Now, a lot of our pupils can struggle a little bit with motivation because they believe that English exists in their classroom and they go to class and that's where they do English. And for them, they can't see the relevance outside of the classroom. Why am I learning this language? And we all know as language teachers and as language learners, it's much, much more motivating when you can see your language being used and having a purpose. And that's what mobile phones can do. We've looked here in terms of writing, but for example, next time you're doing a directions lesson, why not use Google Maps on your phone and get, use that in your class? Or, or next time you ask your pupils about what did you do at the weekend, ask them to get their phone and to show you photos it will inspire, engage, and motivate your pupils so much more. And I'm a big believer in mobile phones can really, really help you do this in class. <clears throat> so adaptations, how can we adapt this? Now, um, as Francisca has already done for me, um, you can encourage learners to find new mediums for you. They're much more tech savvy than you and me, and they'll find so many different places you can publish your writings. Um, so ask your high, particularly your higher levels and your older learners as well to find you places. But remember, you do the posting. Yeah, encourage the conversation to continue with emails. Um, in class, of course, they, they type one email to their friends on the phone, they receive another one. Most of the time it stops there. However, encourage them to keep going back and forth, back and forth. I had a pair of students once who did it for about three weeks, kept emailing each other. Obviously, the level goes down, it becomes a lot more informal, maybe the language isn't as good. But the most important thing was they were so motivated by using English in a real world context, they kept the conversation going. Um, 
print out constructive feedback. Again, there's no better feeling in class when you get feedback of an Amazon review or something from somebody on the internet and you show it to one of your pupils. You can just see their face light up because they finally realize that English is real. Um, what I would recommend is when you do post, say that you're a teacher, say that this contribution is from a non-native teenager, for example, and most of the time people will be really, really good and give you some really good feedback. Um, so show them, show them that to your pupils as well. And right, okay, so we're moving on, whipping through these. So we've looked at reading, we've looked at speaking, we've looked at pronunciation, we've looked at writing. What's left? It's of course the other receptive skill and listening. Now, think, don't comment, please. I'm gonna give you 10, 15 seconds. Why might a student consider exam listening tasks harder than exam reading tasks? So just think for 10 or 15 seconds, please. Okay, so why might a student consider exam listening tasks harder than exam reading tasks, please? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to tell you from my experience why a student might find exam listing tasks harder than reading tasks. I've just seen a comment because they have less time to think. Thank you, whoever said that, because that's what I'm going to talk about more or less. Now, if you imagine, if you're a student, okay, in an exam reading task, everyone can access the material how they wish. For example, you can begin with question number five, number eight, number one, number 10. You can read the questions first, you can read the text first, you can underline, you can read for detail. The power is in your hands as a student. You decide how you access that material. That's one receptive skill, reading. However, the other receptive skill, listening, is quite different, especially in the exam. What happens in an exam is that, of course, you quickly read the questions, you listen once, you maybe formulate some ideas, you listen twice and then the exam is over. As a pupil, you are not in control of the listening. The listening is in control of you and it decides how you access it, whereas a reading is completely different. And I found in my class what this can mean is that students can often be uh, quite intimidating, intimidated by this. They know that a listening is out of their control. It goes quick. They cannot stop it. And it often can lead to, as I said, they're quite negative perceptions of listening tasks. Um, so, of course, how can we use a mobile phone in class to change this? Again, it's a similar idea to using speaking. It's simply using the recording app on your phone and you record listenings to make them accessible. I'm gonna show you the activity process and then again, I'm gonna talk about it in a bit more detail. So activity process would be that every student do the first listening like a normal exam. Everybody listens together, think about their answers, maybe think of some answers that are correct. However, at the same time, pupils record the listening on their mobile phones. Maybe they put it on your desk next to the speaker. Maybe they do it from their desk. It doesn't matter, but they record it at the same time. Because then what that means is, there is no standard second listening. Pupils can now access it as they want. They can pause, they can rewind, they can go forward, they can go back, they can go forward again, they can talk to their friend, they can pause it. They control the listening. They, are, they have the power of the listening in uh, their own hand and they access it how they wish. A little tip again is to use headphones so you don't disturb other people. Um, and then, of course, students are given tape scripts to check their answers and to clarify doubts about the listening. Because um, I'm going to repeat this, but again, I'm a genuine believer, and this is something really quite groundbreaking, really, that mobile phones do in class. They put the power in the hands of the student, and they let students manipulate the listening like they would a reading. And it really, really can change attitudes to listening around and in your class. 
Of course, I completely understand that, yes, sometimes you do need to practice the exam like you practice, um, like you actually have the exam, the two listings, of course. However, if you can do this particular process on a regular basis, it really, really does break down pupils' resistance to listening. Um, so it's a really, really nice activity to do. And if you can do it in your class, that would be uh, something really great. OK, adaptations, guys. Human tape recorder. This is what I call it. This is what my colleagues call it. I don't know if it's what you call it. But again, it's a similar principle. In the absence of mobile phones, pupils can control the listening through you. So for example, they're listening. If they're unsure of something, someone can raise their hand and say pause, rewind, forward, go back. It can get a bit manic, but once pupils are used to it, it's a really nice thing to have. Again, putting the power back in the hands of the students and increasing their attitudes towards listening. Or you can do something which is like a hybrid model. OK, so you've got the classic exam listening format. You've got the idea of recording it and listening it to yourself. You can combine the two by doing this, where you have two listings like a normal exam and then a third listening is where they do what they want to the um, to the listing. So that's my five activities so far. I'm quickly going to talk about policing the use of mobile phones in class as well. Now, because I do understand that although I love mobile phones, I love social media, I love new technologies in class, I appreciate that they can distract students if you don't have rules, if you don't have limits. So I'm going to show you just a few tips and tricks that I use to make sure my pupils are fully concentrated when using mobile phones. Um, the first one is, Place your student in a circle. Uh, why do I do that? Of course, I'm sure you know. It's so you can look over their shoulder. If you've got a pupil against a wall like this with their phone, you cannot look over their shoulder. So get them in a circle and then you can walk around the back of them. Watch their eyes. What do I mean by this? Now, when I was younger, I worked in a clothes shop and I always remember my manager saying, if someone's in a shop with some clothes, and they're spending more time looking at you than looking at the clothes, they're probably doing something they shouldn't be. And the same's in class. If you have a pupil like this, they're doing something they shouldn't be. So just be aware, watch their eyes and see if their eyes are looking at the screen or if they're looking at you. Um, tight time limits, okay. I mean, this goes for uh, any activity really, but the tighter your time limits, the closer you keep them, the tighter you keep them, the less time they're going to have to be distracted. So think carefully about your time limits. And then finally, again, like anything, avoid excessive use. If you're using mobile phones every day, every lesson, people's going to become used to it. They might even become a bit bored of it. And as a result, they might get distracted. So keep it nice and selective. Um, use it now and then. And yeah, they're when you use it now and again, they're going to be a lot more motivated to stay on task. So a little recap, guys. Here we go. Um, the five activities. OK, use a mobile phone, deleted WhatsApp conversations to prepare for gap text activities and training your pupils to look before and after the gap. Preparing for speaking. OK, getting pupils to record their speaking activities so then they can assess them themselves. I mean, don't forget that you can assess them as well. You could take the listening, uh, the speaking, and listen at home, but you don't want to be doing that every week, maybe now and again. This is more for pupils to learn, to be autonomous learners and be able to correct themselves. Preparing for pronunciation, one of my favorite activities where you use voice operating systems to test pronunciation. So people speak into the phone, does the phone recognize what they're saying? Most of the time it does. Uh, and prepared for writing, again, giving real world context to writing tasks, which generally is a massive theme for me with mobile phones, how mobile phones can um, bring English to life and make people see the relevance, importance of it and engage and motivate them more. And of course, listening at the end, recording a listening and getting it in the power, or getting it in the palm of your pupils' hands and them having the power to manipulate the listening how they are. So a uh, final little think task, just think, which one are you going to try first, please? 
just think for 10 or 15 seconds, whenever you plan your next lessons, if it's tomorrow, Thursday, Monday, what are you going to use? Oh, pronunciation, WhatsApp conversations. Okay, great. Sorry, I didn't want you to comment. Some people have, so thank you anyway. Uh, listening, writing, reading, speaking. Okay, great. Um, right, now, uh, just quickly, I've focused on today, to make it accessible to everybody, I've tried focusing on more generic everyday uses of a mobile phone or some big apps like WhatsApp or Google Translate. Don't forget, Cambridge also has some exam specific apps to help your pupils with their exam preparation. Of course, you've got exam lift here and quiz your English as well. So if you haven't told your pupils about them, please do. Um, right, and that is that from me. I would like to pass the floor over to, to Fabio and see if there's any questions for me, please, as well. Hey Greg, well, thank you, hey, first of all, uh, it, was, it was really uh, incredible and, and interesting uh, session. In fact, there's a lot of positive feedback coming through in the chat box. And uh, yeah, I do have some questions uh, oh, for okay. you here. Um, I suppose that, uh, just be uh, proceeding chronologically, uh, just uh, still says most of my students are quite reluctant when it comes to using their own phones for school related stuff especially when it comes to social media, because they feel this belongs to their private sphere. How can I still encourage them to participate? Okay, well, yeah, first of all, Stella, that's really understandable. You do get some pupils that are particularly reluctant, particularly with those social medias that show a lot of their life, whether it be Facebook or Instagram. I've used it less with um, WhatsApp. And genuinely, that's where I would start. I would start with WhatsApp, because in WhatsApp, um, you can generally have less of your information. Of course, you do have a phone number. Um, but I would start by something gentle, Stella. So I would say using WhatsApp, maybe the reading activity, just to sort of develop their interest, if you will, and see that it's not too bad with social media. I mean, because sometimes, Stella, you can make the point, a lot of classes have WhatsApp groups anyway. Um, so they're not sharing any information that they wouldn't be sharing normally. Um, but yeah, start gentle and start with WhatsApp, is what I would say. Great. So, sounds like a great answer. Thank you, Greg. And uh, I've got some more here. So uh, Laura, or Laura, I'm not sure, uh, um, she's asking, is there a way of using WhatsApp without having to share our mobile number with students? Bit of a technical question, I guess. Yeah, well, I would never, I would never advocate WhatsApp. No, there isn't, unfortunately, Laura. Um, I would never advocate giving out your number to pupils. And what you can do, a slight alternative to it is generally, if it's a class activity where they're exchanging amongst themselves, that's fine because you don't need to be involved. However, if it's, for example, a speaking one and you need it sent to you, what I would recommend is that you speak to your director or someone at school and you use the academy email, not your own email. That's what I've done before. And so pupils will say record something on their phone and then send it to me via email but so it doesn't have my number and it doesn't have my personal email as well. But that's how I would recommend doing that. But unfortunately, yeah, WhatsApp, you have to, you have to show your number. I guess so. And uh, there is a question from an anonymous attendee. And the question uh, is, uh, would it be useful to use voice recording only for shyer students or students that are less comfortable uh, doing speaking tasks? Now, that's a good question, Fabio, because I would say even the most confident students, when they first record and when they first listen back to their voice, they don't like it. I don't like it. I didn't like it, Fabio, when I first heard. It's a very uncomfortable thing hearing your own voice. Um, and quite simply, you just have to, you have to break through it. You have to break through it. Um, and once you've done it once or twice and they can see how they can improve, they gradually get used to it. Um, what I would recommend is using headphones because, yes, of course, some pupils, when they play their recording in class and other pupils can hear it, they get a bit embarrassed, of course. So a good, a good recommendation is to use headphones from the beginning. Um, but it's simply a case for a lot of people just to do it once, twice, and eventually they just get used to it after they can see the benefits of it. Great. Uh, thank you, Greg. And... Uh... 
there is a bit of a um, specific case here, but maybe it's uh, relevant to more people. So I teach, uh, so Monica writes, I teach at an international school teaching non-native younger teens. They use English at school and to communicate with each other, but still needing some preparation. How can I adapt these for them? I suppose these activities as so sorry so how can they adapt these activities for in particular i suppose for students who already have a i suppose good degree of fluency in english because they it's an international school they already use english um as a medium to communicate with each other so maybe okay. um I, I suppose the adaptation was the be that you expect more from them fabio if they if they already have a higher level of of language then you're going to expect um, a high level of WhatsApp conversation, perhaps instead of shorter answers in the WhatsApp conversation, you're expecting longer chunks of text um, in terms of the speaking, rather than looking at one criteria, they're looking at lots. I think, I think how you would adjust it is your expectations, not necessarily the, um, the activity themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Greg. I think we have uh, time for uh, maybe one or two more questions. Yeah, so uh, there's one uh, uh, from Antonino. Uh, he asks, uh, any tips for integrating this into online teaching? Well, yeah, I mean, that's part of the beauty of a mobile phone in some, is that, of course, it's, it's a lot of these things are done or they can be transferred over the Internet. So you can use them very much for online teaching, like, for example, the WhatsApp activity. Of course, you can't physically see it, but it can still be done online. You simply need to just explain it to your pupils and model it well. Um, the speaking activity, again, it can be done. I'm just going through them in my head now, Fabio. The pronunciation one, yeah. It's, the beauty of it is, as long as there's some sort of record of it, then it can be transferred to you via email. So it, for sure, it can be done online and probably even more activities could be done in an online class. I'm just, I put, me, I put myself on the spot there, Fabio, uh, Fabio but yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. 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 that's the beauty no, of live Q&A, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just thinking out loud. Um, but no, I, I definitely, they can be used for online classes. The maybe how you set them up could be a little bit different, but for sure they yeah. can, yeah. Absolutely. We have actually quite a few questions left, but I think we have less than a minute now and uh, we should probably close unless you're ready to give a very flash answer to, I think, an important question, which would be uh, from Marcin. Uh, have you tried these activities in large classes like 30 students? Uh, to be honest, no, not that big. I mean, um, what I would say, if you have something that big, it can be done. But again, it's modelling. Some problems can be with the speaking activity you need space. So that might be a case of pupils need to go in the corridor. If you really trust pupils, they can go outside and do it. But really large classes of 30 kids, for example, it could be a bit more difficult, but, but totally possible. It's just how you, how you set up the activity, Fabio. Great. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Greg. Again, um, incredibly inspiring session. And I think uh, we are now ready to close uh, because in 15 minutes, there's, there's another talk. So stay tuned and thank you, Greg. Thank you again, Greg. And uh, don't forget you. to follow Greg's uh, lessons on uh, on the YouTube channel. So uh, maybe we can just quickly share the link again in the chat box. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Learning is with Cambridge on YouTube. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, everybody. I'll see thank you. Thank you, everybody. Soon.